We at ILS are very proud of the record accumulated by the Atlas in becoming one of the world's foremost launch providers serving the commercial market today. I'd like you all to be very comfortable with the program. Therefore, I'd like you to take a few moments and watch a video that shows the production of the vehicle all the way through launch. And that way, I feel you and all of our customers will feel very comfortable when you choose to contract with us and fly on one of the finest launch vehicles in the world, the Atlas. Atlas has evolved into five distinct launch vehicles, carefully crafted to accommodate a variety of payloads. For the Atlas booster and its Centaur upper stage, the journey to the launch pad originates in three major facilities across the United States. The basic Atlas and Centaur tank structures are built in San Diego at Lockheed Martin Astronautics San Diego operations by welding stainless steel cylinders edge to edge to form what is known as a monocoque fuel tank, a tank with no internal bracing. Starting with the forward bulkhead of this Atlas II liquid oxygen section, 19 constant diameter skins are welded together, one and two at a time. 10 more skins then form the fuel section. The Atlas IIAR tank assembly will require four additional constant skins, all on the liquid oxygen section. The shorter Centaur tanks are constructed in the same way. Before leaving the facility, each completed tank is given a manual internal washing. The Centaur tanks are inspected radiographically, and both Atlas and Centaur tanks are then pressure tested to ensure a complete seal. While the tanks are being built in San Diego, the major jettisonable components are manufactured in Harlingen, Texas. In addition to the large thrust section of the booster half stage, Harlingen builds a variety of adapters and fairings. Customer mission requirements determine which of three standard payload fairings are used. Protecting the payload as it moves through the Earth's atmosphere is the job of this cork heat shield installed at Harlingen. Parts from Harlingen are shipped to both coasts for final assembly. In Denver, the jettisonables meet up with the Atlas and Centaur tanks in the final assembly building. Here the vehicle undergoes final assembly and testing. The thrust section is mated to the booster tank and final tank assembly is completed. Centaur tanks for the Atlas II are first fitted with lightweight foam insulation before moving into this class 100,000 clean room for final assembly. The Atlas 2A and 2AS booster stages are propelled by the Rocketdyne two-chamber MA5A engines, which burn liquid oxygen and RP-1, a form of kerosene. Over 535 Atlas engine systems have flown. Our new single-stage 2AR booster will use the throttleable RD-180 propulsion system manufactured by a U.S.-Russian joint venture consisting of NPO Energomesh and Pratt and & Whitney. The RD-180 is a derivative of the flight-proven RD-170 high-performance liquid oxygen RP-1 engine system. The Centaur relies on the Pratt & Whitney RL-10 engines, which burn liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. More than 200 engines have flown and created more than 340 in-space starts. The Centaur for Atlas 2A and 2AS uses two RL-10 engines for propulsion. The Centaur for Atlas 2AR uses a single RL-10 engine. Avionics include Honeywell's Inertial Navigational Unit, Galton's Data Acquisition System, and numerous support systems provided by assorted subcontractors. Atlas and Centaur are flown to the launch site either Cape Canaveral Air Station for low inclination orbit missions or to Vandenberg Air Force Base for high orbit inclination missions. Once at the launch site, final checkout and on-pad mating commence. On the pad, Atlas is erected. 
The interstage adapter is installed and the upper stage centaur is mated to the stack. In the case of 2AS, the caster 4A solid rocket boosters are now attached to the Atlas. While the launch vehicle processing is progressing, qualified Atlas program and customer teams begin processing the spacecraft to make it ready for launch. Spacecraft processing facilities and associated technical support capabilities are provided at facilities such as Astrotech, located in Titusville, Florida. The spacecraft can arrive at the launch site by air or by ground transportation. Spacecraft processing can begin in a non-hazardous payload processing facility, or PPF. After entering the common clean room airlock, the customer spacecraft team initiates preparations in one of three virtually identical clean room high bay complexes. The team performs non-hazardous spacecraft processing activities here, including solar array deployment, propulsion system checks, and flight battery installation. All non-hazardous operations are complete in approximately four to eight weeks. The spacecraft is then prepared and transported to the Hazardous Processing Facility, or HPF. Some satellites arrive at the launch site ready to commence hazardous processing. The spacecraft moves through the first high bay and airlock and is then positioned in the second high bay. Operations performed here include propellant loading, pressurization cycles, pyrotechnic checks, spacecraft weighing. If necessary, the spacecraft is moved into an adjacent high bay for spin balancing. Otherwise, it's returned to the first high bay for flight payload adapter mating and spacecraft encapsulation in the Atlas payload ferry. Lockheed Martin provides a variety of industry standard payload adapters and separation systems to meet each customer's needs. The spacecraft is first removed from its ground support equipment and after a thorough cleanliness check, made it to the Lockheed Martin payload adapter. After final inspection and removal of all non-essential equipment, encapsulation operations begin. First, each payload fairing half is advanced into position around the spacecraft. Next, both fairing halves are aligned together and final closure begins. A preliminary demonstration of all these activities is performed beforehand to ensure proper alignment. Working with each customer during the mission integration process, Lockheed Martin provides procedures for spacecraft payload adapter mating and final encapsulation. In approximately two to three weeks, hazardous processing is completed and the encapsulated spacecraft is transported to the Atlas Space Launch Complex, Complex 36, for Cape Canaveral launches. The encapsulated spacecraft is then lifted into the launch tower and mated to the Centaur upper stage. After several days of integrated testing and final verification of launch readiness, the launch countdown commences. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. We have liftoff. At International Launch Services, a dedicated and experienced team is committed to providing each customer with the highest quality mission integration, payload processing, and launch services.